Alright, so you're in the market for a new phone and you're trying to figure out should I get a flagship from this year or do I just get an older phone or a used phone? Well, you've come to the right place. My name is Lucy Hussain and we're gonna dig right into this right now. Look, I'll be honest with you. It really doesn't make sense for the vast majority of the people to buy a new phone every single year. We're way past the threshold of acceptance. What's that you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna let the doctor explain it. Why, thank you, sir. The threshold of acceptance, as it famously has been coined by Professor T, which is myself, as it applies to smartphone technology, is a point in time where a device has enough specifications and ability to be acceptable as the primary use device for the vast majority of humanity. Now back to you. So basically what I'm trying to say is things have gotten so good. You could get a phone that is a year or two older and save a significant amount of money and you won't really feel like you're missing out on much. Also, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to TELUS because without them, this video would not have been possible. I've been using TELUS for the past 10 years or more. They have great phones, great coverage, great customer service, and their plans are also very competitive. So if you're in Canada, then I have a link down below. Feel free to go check it out. This video is not sponsored by them or anything like that. I just wanted to give them a shout out. So yeah, back to the video. First phone and one of my favorite phones in the Android market is the Pixel 7 Pro. Now this is one of the smoothest performing phones for Android on the market in my opinion. I absolutely love the UI, I love how everything works. Navigation is silky smooth, it's clean, it's buttery, whatever you wanna do with this, it, it just feels great. In terms of build quality, Google's been improving the build quality literally every single year. This particular one is a 6.7 inch, 120 hertz screen, which I absolutely love. I think 120 hertz screen is an absolute must. I know there's people that are going to disagree with me, but in today's day and age, I've become so used to it. Whenever I go back to a phone that doesn't have a 120 hertz screen, it literally feels dated to me. Now, overall, I think Google has done a great job making this phone feel premium. I mean, it looks really nice. And on top of that, it's got a full glass body. Um, and also the haptics are really good, which is an important thing for me. Another great feature of this phone is the actual camera. Now this is touted as one of the best cameras on the market and I can back that up 100%. Pixel 7 Pro has a new 0.5 ultra wide lens, which is great. And it also shoots some of the best portrait photography. And now with portrait video, it's actually really well done as well. So if you're in the market for a clean Android UI and you want one of the best phones from the previous year on the market right now in 2023 for a good deal, then I recommend looking for the Pixel 7 Pro. You can even go down to the Pixel 7 if you don't need some of the camera features and you're okay with a smaller phone. Now, if you have a little more budget and you want to step it up and get a few more features, then another Android phone that I can recommend is the Samsung S22 Ultra. This phone is really great and it has aged really well in 2023 because now we have the Samsung S23 Ultra, not a huge difference from this phone, which means that basically you're going to be able to pick up the S22 Ultra for a lot cheaper with carriers and even on the used market. So something to look for as well. Now, overall, the Samsung S22 Ultra is a solid phone. In terms of build and display quality, it's got a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display, which is one of the best displays that I've used on a phone. Now, this also has a frosted back glass, which does avoid fingerprints. And overall, the look and feel of this phone is also very premium. And my personal feature about this phone is the fact that it has a built-in S Pen, which is basically a stylus, and this comes really handy. Like, I love using the stylus with my phone, whether it's to you know quickly mark up like a screenshot or a photo or sign a contract or even just take quick notes on the go, having a stylus has actually been a great addition to this phone and I really, really like the fact that it's built in. Now, in terms of camera, this phone has got one of the best camera offerings on the market. It's got a quad camera setup, which has a 108 megapixel wide angle lens, a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto lens, a 10 megapixel telephoto and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Now in terms of software and longevity, now I'm gonna be honest, this used to be a sore point for me because I've always been critical of Samsung previously. However, they've been improving their One UI software quite a bit and it's improved a lot over the years. Overall, the software has been pretty great on this. Everything feels snappy, it functions well, and I think it's 
a well put together device. In terms of battery life also, having such a big phone is somewhat beneficial because you get a big 5,000 milliamp battery in here. So it's able to last me the entire day without any issues. It also has some cool features like reverse wireless charging, fast charging and stuff like that. So overall, I think it's a solid phone. So if you're looking for a phone in 2023 that's used or you're trying to get a discount on a phone, check out the Samsung S22 Ultra. All right, so now let's switch over to the iPhone world. Now, what's a great phone, iPhone that you can pick up in 2023? 2023 without breaking the bank. Well, I can confidently say you can go for the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. Now these are solid phones and you can even go with carriers and probably get some of these for free. And I gotta tell you, not much of a difference between what we have this year with the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 13. Now, when it comes to the build and display, it's got a really great build quality all around like we've come to know and expect from iPhone. And it feels great in your hands. And honestly, it just feels very premium considering they cost about $599 for the mini and about about $699 for the regular size 13. Now, now, if you're wondering what the main difference between the 13 and the 13 mini is, because I'm recommending both of them here, is basically the screen size. Like internal spec wise, they're pretty much the same. Now, naturally being a larger phone, the 13 also has a larger battery, which does make quite a bit of a difference because I know the mini does kind of <laughs> chew through battery throughout the day. So if you're somebody who's a power user, then I would probably stick with the 13. Now, my only gripe with the iPhones is the display does not have ProMotion, which is something the other phones that we've talked about so far and pretty much the other phones we're gonna talk about all have. Now, in terms of performance, the iPhone 13 comes with the A15 Bionic chip, which is pretty much almost the same one that you're gonna find in the iPhone 14. And as you know, Apple software is super optimized and everything functions like butter. So there's no slowdowns, no lags for the most part, and the phone just feels new. So overall, Apple does a really great job optimizing the software for these phones. What I really like about the Apple UI and the cameras that Apple makes is that you're able to nail photos in pretty much every situation. Apple does a great job adjusting the photo to whatever your surrounding light and you know uh, other environmental conditions are. So yeah, there you have it. If you're looking for an iPhone and you don't need the absolute latest and greatest, then I would just get the iPhone 13. I think it's a solid phone. All right, moving on. I have to include this phone in here because it has been one of my favorite you know, uh, phones that I've been daily driving for a while now, and that is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. I mean, overall build and display quality, I love this form factor. I mean, I've used it as my daily, and this flip action, mm, I just love doing that. I would literally just get this phone just for the old school Motorola vibes. Like, if you know, you know. Mm. Like legit, this phone embodies being cool. Like you just pull up and somebody calls you and you're like, Damn, like you're 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 going home with all the money. This phone, mm. look. Overall, in terms of build quality, it's nice and small, and it's easy to fit and carry around with you. It just feels really nice in your hand as well. They've done a really great job with the materials and the frosted glass finish. This is the fourth iteration by Samsung, and it just feels very robust. It doesn't feel flimsy, and the hinge, even though I've been kind of doing like this kind of swing action and stuff, like it holds really well. It's nice and tight, so I can hold it in different angles as well, so there's no issues. When I'm actually using the phone, I actually don't notice the crease. It kind of just blends into the device. Now, unless you have light shining down or the sun shining down on it, then you might see it, but in daily use case, you don't really notice the crease that's on the screen. Now, in terms of screen, even though it's not a 4K display or Ultra HD display, it's 1080p, but it's got an AMOLED display, which is really great, and it does have 120 hertz, which is, whew, thank you. It's also got a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with eight gigabytes of RAM. Battery life on this, now previous flips have been pretty bad with battery life. This has been a sore point with the flip phones. Now, thankfully that is improved on this with a 3,700 milliamp battery inside. Now in terms of price, this is probably one of the more expensive devices, brand new on this list. It comes in at about 999. Here's the thing, you are getting you know bleeding edge technology. Basically you're getting a folding phone device. So naturally you're gonna pay a bit of a premium. But also the other thing that I've noticed is in the user market, you're able to find these for quite a bit cheaper, um, which I was surprised. Now, in terms of the camera offerings, it isn't Samsung's strongest camera lineup, I'll say that, but it is a solid enough camera that I don't really notice that much of a difference. Like a lot of people that I ask wouldn't notice a difference between this and like even the Samsung S22 Ultra. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good enough offering. All right, and last but not least, the next phone I wanted to mention is the iPhone 13 Pro. If you wanted something that's a little more premium than the iPhone 13 and the 13 mini, then the iPhone 13 Pro is also a solid option. It does cover some of the qualms that I had with the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. For example, the display. Display on this is solid. It's got a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display and yeah, 
120 hertz panel so it's got promotion on it and oof that's an absolute must for me now as you already know so that's great it's got that nice premium finish to it with that stainless steel sides and frosted glass back um, and I also kind of dig that Sierra blue color which is nice. In terms of camera, it's got a triple camera setup with a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. You can record in 4K 60 frames per second on the video camera, which is great. In terms of software, you already know Apple does a great job. It's very well optimized. And Apple also supports their phones for many years to come. So that's one of the big pros that you get here because for several years down the road, you know you're covered with all of the updates that Apple is going to push to their phones. And last but not least, battery life. Battery life also on the 13 Pro is excellent. It lasts me the full day without any issues. So it does definitely have that going for it. All right, that's it for today. So these are the five phones that I will recommend in 2023. Currently, if you're looking for a used phone or another phone on the market, if you don't want to pay flagship 2023 pricing, then these are phones that you can pick up and it won't really feel like you are getting an old phone or anything like that. These are all great buys and I'm Pretty confident that you'll be happy with whichever one you go with. If you have any particular questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, then you know what to do. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, stay blessed, peace.